Amen. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. And, you know, uh, in case you haven't figured it out, today we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's real. You know, I just, don't, I, I just don't have enough wild-eyed faith to be an atheist or a secularist or a humanist or, you know, a socialist or, or to dabble in that demonic horoscope zodiac thing. I just don't have faith for that, you know. It just, it's a, I, I just don't have that amount of faith. But I tell you, I have faith in the one that's it's been verified scores over how many times that Jesus was born, he lived, and he died, and he rose from the dead. And I've met, I've met countless, countless thousands of people whose lives have genuinely been transformed by meeting this, this risen Savior in faith, coming to him on his terms. I'm telling you, he's alive. And he's coming again. It could be today. Be all right with me. It would be all right with me. Matter of fact, the last prayer the church was commanded to pray was come quickly, Lord Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i go with Apostle John. But, but, you know, he might not come today, but he could. But if he doesn't, that's fine. If he does, that's fine. Important thing is I'm looking for him and I want him to come. But until then, I want to get lost people saved. Amen. It's not a, you know, we're not a huddling up in the corner and, you know, hunkering down and, 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 and singing, you know, the hee-haw, woe is, you know, gloom, despair, and agony on me song. We, we are, we're, we're rejoicing. I, we're triumphant. I mean, we've got the victory. Amen? We have the victory. It's in Christ. And so we want to uh, talk about, I got four little simple points. It's not, you know, it's not real. It's, it's, it's talking about the lifted life. Say the lifted life. And that's where the Lord wants us. In a lifted life. Now, the scripture, and again, it's, you know, I told Christy, I said, you realize we got four out of five of them with us today? We're talking about our, our, our kids. Four out of five of them with us today. And, uh, and all three grandkids and uh, Rob's in across the water over there in Sandville, but he, he'll be coming home next month, and I'm looking forward to that. But I tell you, what, what does your heart good is, you know, I, you're standing up there, and, and you hear this little voice saying, Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> you know, and uh, I tell you, God is good. Okay, Hebrews. 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, uh, that's saved people, okay? Therefore, brethren, having boldness, not arrogance, not timidity, but holy boldness, having boldness to enter the holiest. I mean, that's, that's the, right there where God is. And how? By the blood of Jesus. That's how we enter. We can come boldly. We get to enter in by a new and living way. Thank God for the old covenant, but the new one's better. Thank God for the law that he gave Moses uh, that, that shows us how holy God is and how unholy we are. But thank God the completer of that law was Jesus, and he fulfilled every dot, every jot, and every tittle, every, every, the smallest two letters in the, in the Hebrew alphabet, a jot and a tittle. He fulfilled every one, every, everything to complete in perfection, and then took our place as our substitute that we can live forever. My God, this is better than anything anybody can offer. I mean, this is better than a zero interest refinance on your mortgage. It is. I don't know if it makes such an animal. If they do, tell me where. 
But you understand what, what the Lord has for us is better than anything you can, you can ever hope to attain to. And then he says, by this new and living way, which he consecrated for us, made it special, made it holy. Consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. You see, through his flesh, the work on the cross and the resurrection from the dead. And he says, and having a high priest, wow, over the house of God, high priest, that's Jesus, the high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, not half-heartedness, not a deceitful heart, not a heart with an ulterior motive or your own personal agenda, but with a pure heart, let us draw near to him in full assurance of faith. I'm glad I've never doubted I've truly been saved. I rejoice in that. What is there to doubt? I didn't die on the cross. I didn't shed my blood. I didn't raise from the dead, but Jesus did. And he said he took my place. And if I'd come to him and confess to him, agree with him that I'm a sinner, that he cleansed me of my sin and he would put my, his righteousness to my account and take his sin and put it to his account. And now I'll become the child of God, a son of God. He'll put his spirit in me and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Now that's what the word said. And guess what? I believe the word. And so, he says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You see, when the Lord starts a work on you, it doesn't start on the outside and work in. It starts on the inside and works out. Did you see that? Deliver me from that evil conscience. That those things that just devise and think evil and, and, and plot and plan and, 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 and indulge and justify and redefine. I mean, our society is, has gone to hell and, and calling good evil and evil good. And, and, and yeah, that's as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the coming of the Son of Man. But yet we know we know if our conscience has not been seared, if we do not have a reprobate mind, if, if there's hope in us, we know that God is right all the time. And what he says is true all the time. And your opinion and mine really doesn't count. What he says, it is. You know, I realized a long time ago, if God said two plus three was four, it becomes so. I don't know how it would work out. Although sometimes Luke thinks two plus three is four, but we know that's not correct. You see, what I'm trying to say is what, God's, what God does and says is correct all the time. And, 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 and his blessed spirit will never contradict his blessed word. Now, we're getting to where we need to be. He says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Don't be double-minded. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be up and down, in and out. I've had people ask me, well, preacher, how can I just become more stable? Well, when the doors are open to the church house, be there. Uh, get, be acquainted with the Lord in prayer every day. Uh, be acquainted with the Word of God every day. And the more of God you allow to flow in you, the less of you will dominate your thinking and your outlook. And you will have the mind of Christ. And it will grow and develop in your life. You see. Yes, that's true. I, I meet people all the time. They're just angry at God because of some parent or some grandparent or some boss or some job or all this or that. Can I tell you a secret? Not a one of you are mindless robots. Every one of us are made in the image of God. And with that, which makes us higher than the animals, is that we have the ability to make 
decisions based on enlightenment. We don't just operate out of instinct, you see. But because we're made in the image of God, we have to. Every decision has either blessings or consequences. And that's not a surprise to any of us, is it? That's not a surprise. And so we have to deal with those and face those. And you say, well, what if someone else done something that affect me adversely? Well, take it to God and pray for them and don't let what they did to you be your taskmaster. Because when you have hate and unforgiveness and, and envy and jealousy and all that stuff, that just enslaves you and they may or may not even know about it. Don't live a life in slavery. Amen? Now, pretty good introduction, I think. Let's move on. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen? Now, I like y'all. Y'all fine folk, but guess what? You're just like me. You're not always faithful. But he is. He's the faithful one. He'll never let you down. He'll never fall short. Oh, I've fallen short. I've, I've, you know, I wish I could say, boy, I've been absolutely sterling perfect. Oh, my goodness. You're just blessed to be in my presence. But I'd be lying like a dog with fleas. I'm telling you, he is faithful. And his word is true. He'll, he'll supply. He'll make a way. He'll change you. He'll move mountains. He'll take you over them, around them, or through them, or even under them. But bless God, you'll get on yon side of it. Walk with him. Then he says, And let us consider one another. Well, what do I need to even be concerned about you and you need to be concerned about me? What am I supposed to do in order to stir up love and good works? Boy, wouldn't you just feel a whole lot better about yourself and everybody else if you, if you, if you realize that God's intent for everybody around you is to love you and to stir you up, to provoke you to good things? Not evil things, not harmful things, not things that will hurt, not things that will undermine or destroy, but good things. Oh, that encourages my heart. And that's how we need to start seeing each other. As, as people who love us and want to provoke us, stir us up to that which is good and glorifies God. Not selfish, single-minded agendas or plans or devious plots, but, but moving on in the kingdom and letting the kingdom flourish. And let Jesus be the king. Stir, stir us up, stir us up. And he says, well, here's, a, here's, a, here's one important way. Now, I didn't write this, and if you don't like it, just take it up with the author. Verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh-oh, you're meddling now, preacher. Well, I didn't write it, but I'm reading it to you. There's, there's a movement about, and there's so many people out there that have this view. Church is like the buffet. I can take it or leave it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, one day you will stand before Jesus Christ, and these words, he's going to replay these words in your ears. You need the local congregation, and the co local congregation needs you. You say, oh, I can get by without it. You'll be the first human being to ever live on the face of the earth that could do it. And I guarantee you, that's not you. We need each other. We need to come together for worship and praise. We need each other to encourage one another. We need each other. Why? Because you're not faithful, you're not perfect, and I'm not faithful, I'm not perfect all the time. Do you understand? We need each other. We need each other. You know, 
Somewhere along the line, we forgot that this world is a disaster zone. It's been wrecked by the devil. It started way back in the garden. This is not Disney World. We are not on perpetual vacation. We are in a war. And we are soldiers. We are warriors in the army of Almighty God. And we have things to do. So stop being a wall. And come together in the name of Jesus. There's strength in numbers. You know, down in the Dominican Republic, we had 70 churches come together. Can you believe that? My goodness, you can't hardly get 70 church members to come together in one congregation. And they had 70 churches come together. And the biggest crowd was around 12,000 people in that baseball field, that stadium. Man, it was awesome. And over 2,000 people professed faith in Christ. And scores and scores of people were healed. And, and, and my goodness, I saw some things. I saw some people that were doing some... Blah, 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 blah. But we just took authority in Jesus' name over those demonic spirits. And boy, they got up with a smile on their face. And I'm telling you, you say, oh, well, that's in the third world. I'm telling you, demonic activity is big in America. If you don't think demons are on the move in America, you're just blind and naive. I mean, my goodness, so much of the music, so the drugs and the alcohol. I mean, my goodness, when people start snorting bath salts, you know. I mean, now how crazy can we be? Fry your brain instantaneously. And yet say, oh, man, I'm going to try that. Well, here, just, oh, God. Where do you think all this stuff comes from? Comes right from the pit of hell. Comes right from the f Satan himself. And so, friends, we need each other. We need each other. It's a war zone. Oh, yes, we are to be light and salt. We're to, to encourage people. I saw uh, where T.F. Tenney made a post on uh, uh, Twitter. He says, uh, tact is the ability to make your point without making too many enemies. <laughs> now, you always make an enemy if you stand for truth. But that's not your goal. Your goal is just to stand for truth. And then to let the chips fall where they may. Amen? Dear friends, people need to see Jesus in us. And that's why we assemble together. That's why we have life groups, Bible studies, on Sunday morning and through the week. That's why we have children's church and why we have a nursery ministry. And that's why we have preschool and daycare ministry through the week. We got over 50-some pikers here now, buddy. I tell you, and they're just, and, and, and they hear them sing about Jesus and, and learn, and you listen to the teachers, and as they teach them, and they're teaching, yeah, colors and ABCs and monkey and horse and duck and all that stuff and, and, and all that. But I tell you, we just get a little part, and that be it Sunday morning, Sunday school, children's church, life groups, or through the week, we need each other. Amen? You, if you think you can just go at your, yourself, then you just look around. Listen, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Do you understand? And we all love our mothers and dads and our grandparents, right? And you know their strengths and their weaknesses, right? Well, whatever, whatever is a weakness will be multiplied in you if you don't have Jesus as the center of your life. Do you understand me? You've got to have Jesus at the center of your life, and that's why we assemble ourselves together. My goodness, this introduction is taking a whole lot longer than I anticipated. Not forsaking the assembly ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another. So much the more as you see the day approaching. Jesus is coming again. Now, most Christians don't believe that, and most Christians dread it. They don't even want to talk about it. They don't want to pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. They, you know, for, for a plethora of reasons, they want to be in rebellion. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's coming. Not a thing to keep him from coming today. I'm telling you. I mean, you know, I got one of these Jim Dandy smarter than me phones and I can know immediately what's happening on the earth anywhere immediately 
I used to wonder when I was a young fella, and I thought, how is the whole world going to see Jesus come at the same time? I know now. I know now. Listen, I've been in the middle of Tanzania where I couldn't see a power pole. I couldn't see anything. And people had cell phones. I saw Maasai warriors. You know those tall, skinny, tall drink of waters that have them, them spears that the blade is as long as my arm? You know, and they jump when they dance. I mean, I mean a Maasai standing like this, if he couldn't jump up and stand on this, he's not jumping very high. Now, let me tell you something. Those, those jokers can leap. And, and they're cattle. They're, they're herdsmen. They're cattlemen. They, 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 they raise cattle. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to see. Somebody was with me. Danny. Danny and, and uh, Danny was there. And, and, uh, and uh, oh, Debbie, Debbie Thompson was there. Those folk, they were tall. And my goodness, you couldn't pinch an inch. They were skinnier than they could lay in the shade of a clothesline. But they had these big old spears. I got one in my office. Don't ask me how I got it through our security. <laughs> I got one in my office. And those blades, are, I mean, the blade, it might be as long as my leg or at least long, long, longer than my arm, I think. And when they turned 12 years old, a boy, he has to go out in the savanna by himself so he can trans. Oh, pass over into manhood. What does he have to do with that spear? He has to kill a lion all by himself. Wow, and you thought military school was tough. <laughs> Folks, we need to realize the day's approaching. Jesus came as a lamb, but he's coming back as a lion. But until he comes back a lion, as a lion, there's a counterfeit out there. His name, he's the devil. And the Bible says he moves around as. He's not, but he tries to emulate a roaring lion. Bark and growl and rah! But I want you to know in the name of Jesus, you can withstand him. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, even Satan's. Do you realize? Living the lifted life. Brum, brum. You ready? Holy cow. 22-minute introduction. I would get a C-plus in Dr. Michelson's homiletics class. I can already tell. The lifted life. Well, let's First of all, let's... The lift, when Jesus was lifted up the first time, it was at the, at the crucifixion. Amen? Now, you keep all that introduction in mind. <laughs> he was lifted up on the tree. And, and the Gospel of John 3, 14 says this. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Aren't you glad that's true? Listen, Jesus died for your sins. Make it first person. Jesus died for my sins. Say that. Jesus died for my sins. He did. He saw you. He was after you. He, his atoning work, his sacrificial work on the cross was for you. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Leviticus tells us that. And dear friend, he is the Lamb of God. And so he was that sacrificial lamb. And he was hanging up there between two thieves. And his sinless, holy God blood was coming out as payment in full for all your wretchedness, all your failures, all your wickedness, all your sin. So that you would not have to bear the penalty of that sin in the lake of fire forever. Wow. I'm glad Jesus was lifted up. I'm glad that, that the first time he was lifted up, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, now we are crucified. Those of us that have been born again, we have been crucified with him that we might have the power to live uh, over the victory 
uh, of, uh, over sin. Now I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm, I'm washed in the blood. I'm a Christian. Oh, everything's going to be easy now. Wrong, 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 wrong. There will be easy times. There will be, there'll be gliding times. Yeah, there'll be, yeah, there'll be, man, goodness, this will just, you know, uh, up on the hip mountaintop having a grand old time. But I'm telling you, uh, the mountaintop's great, but you don't plow the mountaintop. You plow down in the valley. I, that's where you sow the seed, and that's where you cultivate the crops. That's where, that's where you graze the cattle. That's where you make the hay is down yonder where, where the, the ground is fertile. And you see, I have to live in this world, but I'm not of this world. And because Jesus died on the cross, I have been, I have been transformed. And so I re every day, every day, what was pictured in the baptistry, or as, as, our, as the Jews called it, they called it the mikvah. Mikvah. I mean, my goodness, you think, you think we baptize a lot. Jews baptized over everything. They got baptized when they got married. They got baptized when they were, I mean, they just, man, they were just, they like, they like getting immersed. They were big time. I mean, there was all kinds of baptisms. I'm telling you, when, when, when I came to Christ and I accepted him, the old man died. But just like Jesus resurrected from the dead, that old man wants to resurrect. That's why we need each other. That's why we need church. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need our prayer. That's why we need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Because I reckon that old man dead, stay dead, you sorry thing. Stay dead. I'm going to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to feed on the things of God. I'm going to walk in the power of His Holy Spirit. And I do have victory over sin. I do. I do. As long as I'm, 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 I'm walking with him, I, I've, I tell you, sin doesn't have a hold. Now, when I start coasting, well, you know, I just, here, here's what the, here, you can tell somebody's going down the wrong road when they say, you know, I, I'm just not getting fed anymore. Well, you're responsible for feeding you. You see, if you're not getting fed, that tells me you're not faithfully reading your Bible. You're not faithfully praying. And you're not faithfully staying in the Lord's house. If you're not getting fed, you sorry thing. You've been weaned. You're off the, uh, you're weaned. <laughs> and you're supposed to be a man, a woman. You're supposed to be walking around upright on your hind legs and, and eating the meat. You see, thank God he was lifted up on the tree. Second time he was lifted up. Now watch this. His resurrection, he was lifted from the tomb. Listen to Matthew 28, 5. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. You see, the resurrection is the validation of God that Jesus did. What Jesus did on the cross is sufficient. You know, there's a lot of uh, liberal theologians that want to deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can I make something just as plain as I can without cussing? <laughs> if Jesus did not die and was buried... And if he did not have a bodily resurrection from the dead, you're going to hell. And I am too. Now, it's that simple. We're going to burn in hell forever if Jesus didn't raise from the dead. But I'm here to tell you he did. He rose from the dead. You see, that's what makes us different from the Muslims and the Hindus and the Buddhists and the Taoist and the Shintoist and the Polywally Doodle All Dayist is I can we we know where their leaders are buried, but bless God, our, I, I'll show you where ours was buried, but he ain't there any longer. He's risen from the dead. The resurrection is proof that death has been conquered. Now you know. Uh, uh, I, I've just began my 38th year in the preaching ministry, 
And I've seen a lot of things happen in those 38 years. My goodness. A lot of things. I've seen a I don't, well, sometimes it was a privilege. I've seen the privilege of, of, of believers trans, just transcending out of this world into the next. I've seen them do a boy just say, oh, and I've heard, I've heard things like this, like, oh, my goodness. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Like they're seeing things, and I'm looking, and I can't see it. But you see, I'm not ready to see those things. You see, the apostle Paul was taken up in the third heaven, and he said he saw things that weren't lawful for us to hear about. It, it would just we. It's just it's when it's time for you, then it'll be lawful. Do you understand? You'll be able to see what they see. But dear friends, there's a few that I don't like to think about who left this world, and it wasn't pretty. And even though they were heavily relieved in a pain wise the screams that were coming out of their mouths weren't because their body was hurting it's because they saw where they were headed and they could see right into the flames of hell but yet in their stubborn rebellion no i won't i won't let go of my drugs or my alcohol or my pornography or my lying or my stealing or my deceit or my double life and over and, over. and they left this world in a not a pleasant way. Dear friends, Jesus' resurrection from the dead is proof that death has been destroyed. Death has been conquered. It's not destroyed yet. It will be. But death has been conquered. Jesus getting up. Therefore, death, death, yeah, it's something that, you know, well, I'm not going to run out here and jump in front of a train, you know. But when it comes... God's grace will be sufficient for his children. Do you understand? I'm glad that he, Jesus was lifted the second time. He was lifted from the tomb. You see, now we're called to live that resurrection life. You see why we need the Holy Spirit? We need prayer. We need the Bible. We need to assemble together faithfully and regularly. You see, it helps us and strengthens us to live that resurrection life. That's in Christ. Because what God's called us to do is humanly impossible. It truly is. It is humanly impossible. You can't get her done. But in him and his power, we can do it. We can win the lost. We can do what needs to be done. You know? We can enlarge and, 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 and broaden our tent and, and reach out in other ways and, 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 and see more people come to Christ. We can. Oh, yes, we can. It's because Jesus was risen that, lifted that second time when he came out of the tomb. Paul said that the same spirit that brought Jesus from the dead now lives in us. You read Romans 5. That same spirit lives in us. And I tell you, we can. We can. We can. I remember when he was in the Dominican Republic. That first night was just a little bit. The old general here wasn't, I'd have had it organized a little differently, if you understand what I mean. And it, when people started coming, we were kind of overwhelmed, you know, the 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 pastors and the, and the workers, and it just wasn't, I mean, we had already the second and third time nights, but the first night was just a little bit, and I thought, Lord, I, I can't, I don't know enough Spanish to understand or to say, and, and where's the translators, and where's the people, and, and the Lord said, go over there. So I just did what I was supposed to. I didn't understand why. I went over there. And then there were people coming forward who wanted prayer for healing and 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 they had they had they were had bondages in their lives and this one lady i can remember she coming forth and 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 she came up and she just looked at me and there was tears running down she was just in such anguish and pain and i thought i wonder what her need is 
Well, you know, God knows what it is. I just put my hands on her and I started on her on her head there and I started praying for her. And and, and she hadn't been, she wasn't crying yet. And I mean her face, she just looked so hard and so bitter and in such anguish. And I just put my hands on her and, and uh, on her head there and I started praying for her. And then the Holy Spirit said, Rub your thumbs across her eyebrows. And I did. I, just, I said, Lord, take wipe away the pain. That she's dwelling upon. Wipe away the unforgiveness. Wipe away the anguish. Now this woman couldn't understand a word of English. But tears started flooding down her face. And flooding down her face. And she just started sobbing. Now she couldn't understand me and I couldn't understand her. But through the spirit everybody was understanding. Do you understand? And God did a mighty work. And it's because of that resurrection life, the power of the resurrection, that accomplishes these supernatural things that naturally just can't happen. And sadly to say, does not happen in too many congregations. Oh, I'd be out of place. Oh, we're not going to put our hands on anybody. Nobody's going to come forward. We're not going to pray for anybody. We're not going to, well, am I going to say liable to fall down on the floor? Then what? Now, when you get to heaven, think of this. How long are you going to be on your face before you get up? Out of reverence and awe. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, I won't. Uh, he'll slap you right down. He'll show you. He's, he's king. Amen? He's king. All right, moving right along. We having fun yet? Friends, live the re in the place of the resurrection. And not la Don't allow your past to come in and overwhelm you. Live in the uh, power of the resurrection. Everybody here has a past. Nobody is free of, no one has a sinless past. But what Jesus has forgiven and put under the blood, don't let the enemy take and try to club you with it. It's under the blood. Live in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Live in his power, his resurrection power. Third time that Jesus was lifted up, it was his ascension when he was lifted up. Remember how he told uh, Mary after his resurrection, he said, I'm not yet ascended. There's a, there's a difference in his resurrection and his ascension. In Acts 1, the disciples witnessed his ascension into heaven and were told that he would return in like manner. In Ephesians 4, 7, he says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. You see, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Do you see when Jesus died on the cross, he went to a place uh, under the old economy, under the old covenant. It was called Abraham's bosom. And, and I, I, you know, I can't be dogmatic about this, but I kind of think it's in, down in the earth somewhere. Literally, I do. I think it's down in the earth somewhere. And do you remember when Jesus talked about the Lazarus and the rich man? And some people in error call that a parable. Jesus never called it a parable. Matter of fact, when Jesus, when you, uh, one of the criteria for something to be a parable, you never use proper first names. And he talked about Lazarus. He named him. This, this really happened. And the Bible says that Lazarus died, and he went into Abraham's bosom. It was, it was a paradise. And then there was a great gulf fixed between this, this, this place, this pre-crucifixion place, and, there, and then there was a place over here that we usually refer to in the New Testament as hell. And so the rich man was over yonder in hell. He could see Lazarus, but according to the text, the implication is the people in the paradise couldn't see over into hell to see those people suffering and crying out in pain and agony. It was over in hell that the rich man said, Oh, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to dip the 
end of his finger in water and cool my parched tongue. Now, how much water can you hold on the tip of your finger? He wasn't asking for a gallon. He was asking for a drop. How precious it must be. And he said, send Lazarus. I got five living brothers yet. Send Lazarus and he can witness to them so they won't come to this terrible place. Well, let me tell you something. When Jesus died on the cross, he went down yonder. I can imagine when he died, man, all them imps and demons of hell was all excited. Hey, we whooped him. Hey, Lucifer was right. Oh, we got him now. And here he was. I can, I, can, I can just hear old Satan. Get him, bind him. Hold him down, hold him down. Jesus raised up in power and slung him off and walked up to old Slewfoot and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and said, yeah, I've got him now, buddy. You see, Adam surrendered the keys in the garden. That's the only victory Satan's ever really gotten. Oh, he, he has little skirmish victories, you know, in the lives of people. And every, lost per, every person who's ever left this earth not trusting uh, in the message of God that God had delivered for that time, for that dispensation, they, they, had, they couldn't go to paradise. They had to go to hell. But I can just see Jesus now. I'm he who was spoken of by Moses and the prophets. I'm the one Abraham looked for. I'm he. And... Uh, and so you all know over yonder in the fire, I am he. I am he. Every one of you were born with this in, in your side, your breast. There is a higher authority. I need reconciliation. I need to be in harmony with, with you. And there's, I've got, and there's an accounting day coming. Every human being is born with that regardless of, of what part of the world they're in. They're born with that. And so Jesus announced, I'm the one. And then I can just see as he turns around to Lazarus and all the saints, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Adam and Eve, Enoch, Methuselah. <laughs> I can just see him right now. I kind of, you know, I'm a, I'm a country boy, so I kind of look I like it going down to Lee Ellis's store. Comes in and, you know, I can just see Jesus coming in like if, if Lee was the storekeep. And he, I can just see Jesus saying to Lee, Lee, you're holding some checks on these people. Let me lay cash on the barrel head. I'm here. It, I'm paying up in full. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 You see, they were looking forward to the Messiah. We are such a privileged people that we're looking back to it. We're looking back to it. We are a privileged lot. Oh, my God. Aren't we a blessed people? Well, friends, Paul calls us to set our minds on things above where Christ is seated. And that needs to be the true pro reference point of our lives. We walk in victory as sons and daughters of God, as kings and priests. We are to walk that way. And then the fourth, lift. And he'll be lifted all time. He is lifted by the tongues of men and of angels. Listen to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is and he will be lifted up eternally before all as the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And his name will be confessed by all to the glory of the Father. I'm telling you, every damned soul one day will bow their knee and say, Jesus is Lord. It won't change a thing, but they'll do it. The book says so. They will do it. Every person who's never been truly born again, 
Every person who has, their life has not been changed. Every person who's not been embraced the resurrected Christ. I'm telling you, if you embrace the resurrected Christ, it will never be the same. Your life will change. And it continues to change. That's the amazing thing. You know, you think, well, oh, boy, okay, Lord, I, you know, I don't rub snuff no more. I, I never did. I tried once. Thought I was going to fall off the earth. <laughs> I don't know how people do that. They're, I just, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was. Mm. But he changed me. Do you understand? He changed me. From 1967 to 1973, I played in a rock band. Oh, I was sweet. Oh, it's a pretty thing. I found an old picture of me. You will never see it. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, my lovely. Oh, she's going to. Well, I don't know which one to do. Uh, Hannah and Tori, will you all stand up for just a minute? Come on now. See these red ladies? My hair was longer than theirs. <laughs> these are my girls, by the way. Thank you. I remember one time coming home and that long blonde hair, you know, you know, and my mom said, you're going to get a haircut. I said, oh, mom, you know, I'm, I'm past 18 now. No, I don't know, mom. Well, then dad come in. <laughs> get a haircut. I did. And it went from here. Stand up, Christy. To her length. I said, I got to cut, Dad, at least two or three inches. He spoke French. No, he didn't. He was a Baptist preacher, but I got to swore he was speaking in tongues. I'm not what I used to be. Do you understand? I can tell you all kinds of things. Things I, my God, I just think, I thank God I'm alive. I'm telling you, I thank God I'm alive. You, I wonder how, I, and I'm definitely not going to tell nothing because there's too many young people in here. But I'm glad I'm alive. He rescued me. He changed me, and I'm glad he still rescues me, and he still changes me because he was lifted up. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tree, the tomb, the throne. We need to live with all three in view. The tree the tomb, and the throne. Thank God he died. Thank God he arose. And thank God he rules. Thank God. And what's going to see us through the next days and weeks and months and years as we walk here until our time here is over and it's time to walk on higher ground? Living the lifted life. In Christ. But friends, I want you to understand, you can't live it if you've, not, if you've not ever been put in Jesus Christ. You've got to come to him. You've got to trust him. Let me close what, in saying these scriptures from the Apostle Paul in Galatians 2, verse 19 and following. For I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. I don't frustrate it. I don't make it meaningless. For if righteousness comes 
through the law, by performance, by your works, by your benevolences, by your accomplishments, if you are righteous because you're good enough, then the Bible says Christ died in vain. Christ died for nothing. I'm telling you, he died, but it was for you and for me. He shed his blood for you and for me.